Hello, and welcome to What's Bubbling at Zimbi. I am Dr. Abstract, and in this bubbling, we're going to take a look at the Zim Dev site. So you go to Zim at zimjazz.com and press Devs right there. Click. I'm clicking. Did I click? I think I clicked. And here it is. Brrrr. Zim for developers. So the URL for this is dev.zimjazz.com. And here we have uh, Canvas Assets and Beyond. So this is showing us our little uh, sprite there. And you can put that on pause if it's annoying you. <laughs> I like it annoys me sometimes. So here's a dial and here's dragging within a box. And any one of these you can see the code set there's a like a click there and it's the code for all of these ones or uh, what is this this is um, that goes to the docs I think so this is the docs on on the dial let's have a check there's the docs on the dial wonderful Woohoo! and we can click next and this one is called the selector as it's titled there and then we've got a radial menu Ooh, and we've got Mmm, I've just eaten dinner, so I'm not quite as mmm as this, but still that pizza looks pretty good, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, where does this one go? There we are! Woohoo! So that's the scrambler and a label on a path that you can play around with. Oh, I dragged it by accident there and a bunch of shapes. And then a squiggle uh, that you can play with uh, or a blob that you can play with. And then a series of other uh, components as well. And if you click on any of those components, it will take you to a component. So the idea behind the dev site in general is that we've, uh, well, it no longer looks like um, cartoons. So I don't know if devs were a bit concerned that this that Zim was for kids. Uh, mind you, they still have to come here and find it. But Zim's not just for kids. I mean, it can be used for kids, but zims for everybody and then it was like to, to be able to show a bunch of things that could be brought into these other uh, development platforms such as react angular and Vue, and uh, just you know into an html5 page etc let's look at our other conveniences as well there's hit tests so an example of a hit test there's a transform so that we can rotate this stuff and uh, change things up this is for animation and in a series to show developers that yeah you can just put little animations this is html page we're in html and that's zim in there as a matter of fact we've got zim all over the place in here this top bit is zim as well uh, that's a, a, a zim frame this is a zim frame this is a zim frame and they're all showing up in tags so there's the zim duo technique so giving an idea down below here that's just html down below and some other oops I slid I could have watched that I guess I could turn off the the dragging you see you can drag those as well so in that case as I was doing this I, I did it too quickly and it thought it was a drag but you can stop that from happening probably should do that built in here is a wiggling so stuff that's wiggling about good for Halloween and dynamic parameters we can pass in things like green and blue, and then as it makes the circles here for the tiles, it's alternating, or not alternating, just random, randomizing between those. If you wanted to alternate, you would pass in a series. And there's other things you can pass in, mins and max, and also the results of a function. We're back again. Then controls. So here are some controls, including a motion controller. That turns the motion controller off. And <laughs> nice, huh? <laughs> Bring, brings it back in. Uh, what else have we got here? A particle emitter. Lovely. And we can draw with the pen. Whee! Uh oh, what have I drawn? Next. And here's some parallax. Ooh, my. And then animating noise. That also shows that we could use Zim for charts and graphs and things like that if we have and people do that. And then this is um, without the bounds showing there with it. Uh, that's layout, which allows you to lay out stuff in various regions. And then here's an example of the generator. And then we're back to our very first one with our 
Sprite and Dynamo. Once again, documents and code are available there. All right, well, uh, good. You, If you've come from Zim, you probably know about all of those things already. So we're just trying to show developers some little uh, clips or whatever you want to call it, little canvas bits, little animations, little dials and stuff that they could use if they wanted to. So you just add Zim to a div tag and you put uh, whatever the div tag ID is, you say new frame and then in here once a frame is ready you've got all your Zim goes into the div tag. Or set aside complex frameworks and love Zim simplicity like these guys have done here. So some examples, Ami is making um, a Pathfinder app where you have to find the shortest path between something. That's a mobile app. It's uh, quite popular. And here's an e-learning app where a bunch of little dots are being created. And we've got tables and graphs all created with Zim. Here's a, a game, a game where uh, there's slide out panels and it's multi-user and all nice graphics and stuff like that. And these guys are saying good things about Zim. Definitely good things about Zim. So have have a read. One hundred apps later, we know it was our best choice. I've loved Zim right from the beginning. Never found an easier platform to use with excellent support. Maximum results, minimal coding, quantum leap in speed and efficiency to create these engaging resources. Coding in Zim lets us focus on creation and not waste half our time on custom classes. And there's community at Slack as well. And wish that they found it earlier. So Zim is great. Uh, these are acronyms that developers will know. A single page app, isn't that cool? A single page app gets an acronym. All right. And a lot of the things we make in Zim are so straightforward that we can make them in a simple uh, single page if we do want. Progressive web apps are uh, web apps that act like mobile apps where we can, they can get uh, put on on the desktop of the mobile devices. What, what's that called? The home screen. They can access various uh, mobile commands and things like GPS and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> uh, what else? Vibrating and stuff like that. So we can make um, progressive web apps and they get stored offline as well. So you don't even need the internet. And model view controller is uh, just, you know, it's a design pattern. We can certainly use that in Zim. So these are phrases that developers sometimes know. We provided a set of templates there. And the start will take you to that template page, I believe. And the lab is new. Let's click on the lab here. So the lab allows you to test these various things. I I think we might have done an explore of the lab already. I can't remember. For some reason, I remember going through all of these. If not, then you can certainly look at it. Uh, and the idea is you, you uh, let's see what an emitter looks like. So I've clicked on emitter, and then we view it. Ooh, isn't that cool? And there's the emitter. And then you can clear it and try something else. Uh, the wig is kind of funny. I'm going to click the wig a whole bunch of times. I'm pretty sure that I've done this because I remember showing that. And then we're going to view it. So that threw a whole bunch of wig uh, code in there. <laughs> it's kind of funny because then they all just sort of wiggle. The wigs are wiggling about. And I don't know if you can tell. They're not just moving, but they're actually sort of flowing a little bit, like uh, hair blowing in the wind. But now it looks like some creepy crawlers from a from a Halloween show of some sort. But anyway, that's uh, the idea there. The lab lets you type in your own things and try out. So that's the lab. And we have a link to the code in five minutes. That's a great series that just takes you through a whole bunch of different things that we've managed to code in five minutes with Zim. Uh, it's unbelievable the types of things we've coded there. Now that's not necessarily for beginners. That's um, I did that. Dr. Abstract has done this series and we've coded in Zim for a long time so we know what we're doing. But it does give an idea about how easy it is to create many many different things from art to to components, uh, so complex components to things like parallax and animating sprites with, with movements of mouse, things you wouldn't expect to be all that easy. There's a link to our code pen, uh, oh sorry, code pen here and GitHub. 
we don't really put much stock in GitHub to tell you the truth. I mean, we post our stuff there, but uh, we haven't sort of gone out and tried. That's not where our support is. Our support is in Slack. Um, so if you go to GitHub and see that we've got a couple hundred stars, it doesn't necessarily mean that we're a small library with, with very little things and not popular and stuff like that. We want to, obviously we want to be more popular and maybe this will help us be more popular with the developers, but like our people, our designers and, and, and creators and stuff like that, they're not necessarily on GitHub. That's developers for the most part. And we've tried to pitch Zim to developers for many years and it's not easy to do. They just seem to want their they're complex libraries, they're complex frameworks. These guys up here, you know, just doing web development stuff. And Zim's not really web development. It's it's exciting. Zim is amazing. It's so colorful and we would love it. Fine if developers come in and do this. But, you know, shake off your text-based kind of applications. We're not making HTML forms here and stuff. So shake that off a bit. Come on in and try something expressive. Take a look at what's being done in five minutes. All of, like we can make roller coasters. Make a bloody roller coaster. You're a developer. Come on in and make a roller coaster. Don't, you know, don't make yet another text information-based site. So sorry if we're a little bit down on that, but uh, it does seem that way. We even wrote, oh, down below here. Uh, well, let's see. I'll just whip down below at the very bottom is Medium. And one of the Medium articles is how to get a developer to use the canvas. So you're welcome to come in, read that, and uh, they would put in a couple snipes at you. So I, I could be totally off base, I mean, but I don't think so. I've been around developers all my life. I've been around creators all my life. They're a little different, <laughs> okay? It may be that there's a bit of a creator in you, developer. I hope so. Come on in and explore that. That's what we want you to do. All right, that would be great. We would love that. Uh, just don't make your normal desktop text-based app, though. You know, think about it. There is a link in the About section. So right up at the top here, you'd have to pop into About. And at the top of About, let's see, does that, that loads in the same one. But anyway, at the top of the About, there's this thing right here, a wise, wise in. It's called, and you get to that a bit later on down here, too. YZIM. This is the whole YZIM thing. And it talks about the difference between, and, and so will that developer uh, example. As a matter of fact, or sorry, um, the what's it called? The Medium article on developers also talks about this. So it, it's sort of talking about the things that Zim is good for. As a matter of fact, the things that Zim are good for are also found right here. If you click on the Zim icon here, right back here, all of these things, Zim is really, really good for these things. Okay, so how, and, and you open that up and you take a look at what's inside. Also, um, if we scroll on down, this is back in the dev site. Let's see, um, this article right here, your guide to when to use a JavaScript Canvas framework. That is what addresses that issue directly. So in that, it's sort of like a, a blog post or an article that tells you when you would use a JavaScript Canvas framework. All right, so that would be really helpful if you're a developer having to see this or having coming coming upon this, <laughs> then um, make sure you check out that article. The big one in the medium is this, Your Guide to Coding Creativity on the Canvas. It's actually a 12-part guide series. So these other guides right under here, these are the 12 other guides that all stem from this main guide right here. And if you want to know about a, uh, Canvas in plain English, there's an article as well as selecting a JavaScript Canvas framework. So a whole series that. If you like code, check out Innovations in Code. Uh, we dumb that down a little bit or simplify that a little bit, I guess we call it. I think dumb people are actually people that can't speak and so we don't want to use that term anymore. <laughs> My apologies. Um, we've simplified that a little bit for designers also to, to look at, but in there we talk about, I think we also talk about the things that we've done in Zim that are special. And that's things like the Zim Duo technique and the Zim V values for dynamic parameters. And I think the we focus on that a lot, though, in how to get a developer to use the canvas. So uh, you should get enough of that in there. 
All right, we've missed a bit in the middle here, so let's pop on up. Uh, we talked about the five minutes, we talked about GitHub, and that's what set me off on developers and versus creators in general. Uh, this is CodePen on CodePen. This probably links to the t CodePen topic for Zim. Oh, no, it links to Zim. So this is Zim on CodePen, but also under topics here, take a look. You'll recognize these. There's React and Vue and Flutter and uh, some other ones here, but there's Zim right here. Okay, so Zim's got um, a code pen topic with templates. So these these are like easy examples of Zim, uh, registration points, animation, and they continue on. So you go next, 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 how to drag on paths. And so easy examples that almost in a sense act like just sort of, kind of like templates, but they're really just showing one thing at a time. Whereas the featured pens here, the featured pens are a series of things that we've made with Zim and it goes on and on and on as well. Uh, isometric boards, animations, and uh, well, you, you know, tons of stuff. So there we are overlaying Zim onto HTML. So we do some of that, but most of these things are just pure Zim. So here's uh, an example of pure Zim. And you can pick up this thing and ha ha, I am Batman. Look at that. You're like doing a little, like this is a Zim blob. And that allows you to, um, well, if, if you wanted to, make these kind of puppets or, or whatever. But that's because we want it, that's what we wanted to make at that point. Okay, so that's CodePen. Tons of things, hundreds of examples in there. You can fork those. It's front end developer world for the most part. Um, some creative coders, but a lot of people working in HTML and CSS there as well. And we are constantly, Zim is just like everything that Zim remakes from HTML, CSS, and JavaScript is like one third the size. Any animations, anything that we're making, one third the size. Same with any of these other, other frameworks, like uh, React tries to get in and make some of that stuff, and we blow them away. We're a third of the size of React apps. And, and just every single time we do it, that's the case. We're good at interactive media. React and stuff and Vue are not good at that. They're good at other things. They're good at making information apps and getting data to upload. And actually, Zim's pretty good at that too. You'll find that we've got uh, binding. So uh, Zim's got binding in it as well in the canvas. It's also got, um, we're connecting components using um, wire. So we wire up components to things that need to be controlled. So we've got a couple different ways as well as traditional JavaScript events in there for handling data. There's also, uh, oh, as, as we scroll down here, that would be some of the helpers that, that are in here. For instance, uh, there's model view controller being used with it. Here's wonder for various stats, but this is ZimBase. So ZimBase remakes basically um, MySQL, or My, it uses MySQLi in the back, but it makes it again a third the size and it just treats it like arrays and it's a I think much easier to use in general. So that's Zim base if you need to go to data. We've also got um, async. So Zim async is asynchronous uh, JavaScript like, um, you know, Ajax kind of work. And JSON, we're beyond JSON. So one of the things in here, I don't know where it shows up, is called Zimon. Zimon allows you to uh, stringify any object and store it as data and then bring it back and recreate that object. So uh, Zim objects, for instance, like circles and, and uh, emitters and stuff can be stringified, stored in a database, and then brought back in and recreated. So it's like beyond JSON. It's not just, uh, it's not just arrays, object literals, and strings and numbers, but it's actually any Zim object. Isn't that amazing? That's Zimon, so check that out. Um, here we are bringing in other types of things like Adobe Animate can export to Zim because it exports to CreateJS in HTML5 basically. Uh, HTML5 mode exports to CreateJS. Well, Zim is built on CreateJS. So that means we can export to Zim as well. And there's the Zim shim that does that. There's CreateJS coming in, of course, like because we're built with CreateJS. Anything that the canvas can do, Zim can do because it's built on the canvas. And we've created what's called generator class, which is like uh, the same way that processing works, the generator class, as well as we have shown many times that Zim is shorter 
than processing in, in doing things. Uh, it's possible processing may be able to do s some things shorter than Zim, but now that we've got generator, which is basically um, relative drawing. So in Zim, we've always had absolute drawing and, and various loops, and then we can make Zim objects and position those relatively, but we weren't able to before, we were not able to draw relatively. So we couldn't say, draw a line from here, rotate 30, draw, draw it, make it 100, and then rotate 30 again. We'd have to start using sines and cosines in an absolute way. But now with Zim Generator, it's got relative drawing. So we're matching what process is doing. And we've got these things called dynamic parameters and dynamic parameters are amazing that processing doesn't have. It may be that processing has various connections to hardware and stuff, but JavaScript's got a lot of that too. I mean, P5 is JavaScript. So whatever, you know, whatever they're doing to access uh, hardware and stuff, it's all through JavaScript. Zim could do that as well. We might just be missing some of the libraries, most likely, for that sort of physical computing side of things. But otherwise, for drawing art, come on in. Zim can draw art just like P5 can as well. So we're showing that that's um, the situation. And like I said, we've got these helper files like distill. What distill does is minify, I guess, in the developer world, it's known as tree shaking. We called it distill, didn't know about tree shaking, but it kind of made sense to do in a sense. Is that compiling? I'm not sure. But whatever, it's uh, you run this before you uh, publish. You run it, and it, it takes out only uh, the, the code that you need from the big Zim library, which is 600K or something like that. It takes out what you need, maybe drops it down to 100K or 60 or 70K, depending on what you're making, and that's minified. Uh, we have integrated physics now. We've got animations along path. We are industry leaders in thing, doing things like dragging along path. As far as I know, we're one of the only ones that do that. We, we have editable, user editable paths. So the users get to edit paths just like you could in, in Illustrator, for instance. We're animating along them. We're dragging along them. We're doing hit tests along them. So our path work is second to none as far as uh, we can tell various patterns. Uh, we've got multi-user sockets called Zim Socket. Wow, cool. Zap is a way to share code. We've got TypeScript typing, so that's all in place. Node Package Manager, we're on there. Um, we can make uh, sprites, so this, such as the ones exported from Texture Packer, which exports to the CreateJS as well, the CreateJS format. We use that various icons, um, I think that's good. Accessibility, accessibility on the canvas, we're uh, leaders in that as well. Um, Pixie is great, so Pixie is a competitor. Did we bring in some Pixie? No, uh, but Pixie is a competitor. They're sort of a, along the same lines as CreateJS. And Pixie does accessibility, but as far as I, I know, we've got components, like Zim's got a whole bunch of components, like all these components, and all those components are accessible. Uh, Pixie doesn't really have components, as far as I know. You know I mean, they might have a, be able to turn something into a button and stuff, but um, you know, accessibility is a, a bit more important when you've got custom components, which is what we've got here. Okay, so that's a, a bit of an overview on all of that. Here are the versions that we've gone through with, with Zim. We're on version cat. And these are some of the things we've introduced in version cat. We're now time in seconds. We've got added a synth, which is really cool. So we're, you know, we're starting to be parallel with whatever that other one, SoundJS is and stuff. Like we've got a lot of the stuff that's going on there to be able to handle wah, like wah, 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 and, and tremolo and, and these effects and, and create uh, tones and stuff. So that's all there. We've got connectors. Connectors are when you drag node-based node, node -based things to connect various stuff. So we've got that. And there's the wire and the bind, as mentioned. Zim 10, we integrated physics. We made a wrapper. A wrapper is uh, much like the Flexbox in CSS that like will wrap things and split your columns up in various ways. And we've even added some cool things in there that actually take columns and create voids in them, uh, either vor vertical or horizontal. I think you'll find for our wrapper, it all just makes sense. 
It's not like uh, out there in the CSS world where you're bloody well playing, you know, games to learn like Flexbox Froggy. Here's, I know you guys, I know there's like the Flexbox is a little complicated. So let's play a game that will help us, you know, figure out what Flexbox does. It's like no need. The words we use are pretty straightforward. Does all that kind of same stuff, but a lot easier to understand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, it could be off base there. Who knows? But I mean, that's that's certainly how I found it. Uh, that's the wrapper beads laying things out along a path. That's pretty cool looking. We brought in SVG as well in ten to make our blogs work. Blob work with SVG as well as an SVG container. A radial menu. That's like the height of uh, that's the height of components. A radial menu. D-pads for um, controlling, but we can also handle game pads and stuff like that if you're if you're into that. There's Zim Shim, there's Zimon, uh, Shape Tweens, uh, so the Shape Tweens between um, shapes. We also introduced Retina there, which is like vector crisp Retina, um, handling it with the device pix as pixel ratio, as aspect ratio, I was going to say. <laughs> Uh, marquee for um, uh, handling ads, for instance, you know, something that will show ads over and over again and run, run you through things. Uh, that's just Zim 10. Zim Neo was animations along the path. Zim Oct, we introduced style. So we've got style like CSS like style on the canvas. No, nobody else has that. Um, so that's pretty cool. And HEP, we introduced uh, schools. Zim School is a whole way to learn Zim. Zim Kids is there too for kids to learn Zim. And there's a whole series on creative coding. Learn JavaScript with creative coding, an amazing way to learn JavaScript. There's the various pizzazzes. We can bring in 3JS. So 3JS sits within Zim and we can control that with the Zim components. There's a game module which handles stuff like uh, an isometric board and leaderboards and that kind of stuff. Um, brought in uh, our own keyboard then too in six. That was all about accessibility, uh, but we also introduced a bunch of other things, including a squiggle at that time. Is that when our squiggle came in? Uh, various hit tests, raw ticker, which is uh, request animation frame rawness to, for optimal uh, graphical um, uh, dynamic creation. And Zim V was the dynamic parameters. So that is so cool. You can pass in an array and it'll pick randomly from these things. You can pass in a series and it will pick them in order. That would be things like, imagine uh, a timeout. So we've got a Zim, not a timeout, an interval. We've got the Zim interval. Well, those intervals always have to go at the right at the same time in JavaScript. So we would have to go out to a timeout and then sort of randomize what the next timeout was going to be. Well, in Zim, we can run an interval and we can pass in an array and then it would pick from that. We can pass in a min and a max, so an, an object literal with a min and a max value. And then every time the interval runs, it will pick a number between the min and the max or a series. So we could actually play songs with uh, intervals that have specific times between them, all using Zim V values. They're great for tiling. When we tile things, rather than tiling the same thing that looks the same all the time, which sometimes you want, we can pass in Zim V values and actually change what we're, we're tiling because it picks something different every time it tiles. So Zim V is amazingly handy. It's great for emitting things as well. And all of the styles accept it. So it's like we can style anything and pass in Zim V dynamic parameters into that. It is way better than any nth child kind of crap going on in CSS. It's just way more flexible, way easier to use than nth child kind of crap. <laughs> Okay, so come on in. In Zim 4, this is where we were converting from just a helper library, in a sense, for CreateJS. We realized, ah, you know, we've got all these great methods, single, drag and drop, uh, multiple types of hit tests that you would see down in the early ones here. And what we did is we just overtook all of the CreateJS things, like a container. We, we made them a Zim container, and we added the Zim 4 method. So now, a container can be dragged and dropped. And so rather than using functions, which you can actually still do if you want, like a uh, you could say zim.drag circle. Instead of that, we can now say circle.drag. And that was in zim4th. So we call those the zim4th methods. 
Uh, in Zim Try, we brought in Distill, Wonder, and Async, as well as a bunch of other things. In Zim Duo, this is that cool one where we can pass in normal parameters in order, or a single parameter that is a configuration object. As far as I know, no other library or framework does that. And it is so convenient because sometimes you want to just use straight parameters. Sometimes it makes more sense to use the configuration object with the property names and, and the values. And Zim Duo makes Zim just amazing to work with. And we've, by the way, we've open sourced the code for Duo. We've open sourced the code for the Zim V. We've open sourced the code for Zimon. So you can come and find that, hopefully be able to use it as well as we do. I mean, we're having a great time with it. It makes using Zim so much easier. And from a developer standpoint, it's fantastic. So sorry if I'm like uh, overselling this or anything like this, but you know, come on in and take a look and see what this stuff's all about. Um, so that was Zim Duo and Zim One. We introduced all those conveniences, basically a bunch of co general components, a bunch of conveniences, including pages and layout. So how to go from one page to the other in in um, on the canvas and layout for responsive design. This layout is what Flex is. Like that's Adobe Flex and um, was a way that you could dynamically lay things out in regions and they all scale next to one another. But the regions themselves keep the aspect ratio. We call it flexive design. That's what I call it. And um, we introduced that. That is an extremely complicated bit of code to handle multiple regions all stretching with margins and paddings and maxes and mins. Um, it's to some degree what Flexbox is. Um, in combination, we've got we've also got Zim Tile. Tile is in here, and we've made Tile responsive as well with things like uh, you can almost separate out the rows so that they tile individually in a sense and ignore columns. And that's really cool. You can't do that with a C or with a an HTML table. It would be really neat if you could. Imagine that, like collapsible table cells. That's sort of what Flexbox is as well. The difference is is the tile doesn't wrap whereas the wrapper wraps. So we've got tile for tiling things that you don't want to wrap, like that's grid probably. And then we've got the um, the wrapper, which is like the flex box. And we've got the layout class, which isn't really like either, I suppose. It, it's uh, more positioning stuff. So that's been around since Zim 1. Uh, responsive design on the canvas. For adaptive design, you can just change what you're showing. Pages does that, it handles, say, both horizontal and vertical. We can remove things based on sizes. There's all sorts of uh, availability for scaling. There's scale two. There's, you know, programming is in general responsive in the first place. <laughs> we're all, we're working percents. Well, that's just like a decimal for us. And so all of that has been around in programming right from the beginning. We don't need CSS. So there you go. That's a, a, a tour through the various versions by a rather dramatic Dr. Abstract who's been working on this for, for some time. So come on into Zim. Here's all of our social media stuff here. You can find us on any of those. And then these are what would be called the gold bars back on the main Zim site. So it takes us there. Let's go back to the main Zim site. So here's the main Zim site. There are the gold bars. There's the lab that we put in there. You can experiment with things in there. That'll be fun. An intro that has well-commented code on some of the things that we often do. Tips is a place where you can go and find tips on all sorts of things, uh, like uh, how to bring in images and sound. What about the namespace? I know developers like namespace. We can do a namespace of zim.circle. But we, by default, have taken that away so that, uh, you know, we've got young kids working on Zim as well. Zim is so easy. It's great for professionals, but it's also that makes it great for, for teaching kids and high school kids to even uh, grade school kids how to do this. Like, what's so hard about a new circle dot center dot drag? That's all pretty good. Zim, you will find, is all chainable. It's like chaining everywhere. So... There's a new circle, dot center, dot move, dot drag, all that kind of stuff. We have these like short chainable methods. You would not believe how wonderful that makes it. That means we don't have to assign the circle to a variable. Like about three quarters of the time, we don't even store our stuff in a variable because we can just do everything we want to it, including adding events like tap and change and stuff like that, all without even storing in a variable. 
So uh, that's pretty cool. Anyway, I don't want to take you through all of this. It's just being, be known that if we wanted to, you can just set ZNS equal true at the top, and then it forces a namespace. And that means that it won't uh, conflict with any other libraries or frameworks that you're using. Just Zen ZNS, Zim namespace equals true, forces a namespace, and you've got to use the namespace. Otherwise, we default to not using the namespace, which just is most of the time because Zim is a framework. Frameworks don't usually work with other libraries and stuff like that. Not, not usually. Zim, you will find, has almost everything you need. Uh, we've built tons of stuff without having to go out to other frameworks or libraries. So for those of you who are kind of stuck in this mode where you think you're going to be doing this, bringing a little bit of Zim into, into Vue or a little bit of Zim into React, that's what we're saying here, you guys. Set aside the complex frameworks. Maybe you don't think React or Vue is, is complex, but I can tell you this. We just remade a Vue site again at 33% the size of Vue. And it's like, come in and take a look at it. You know, you can find stuff like that here. And, and you'll see that Zim is simpler than Vue. End of story. Sorry about that. So, you know, just stop thinking that you need to put it in Vue just because you already know how to do Vue. <laughs> just work like we do. Work with Zim. And I mean, what is harder? That, like, what's what's hard? All I do is put two source codes up at the top, CreateJS and Zim. And that's it. You're done. None of this ES6, none of this gulp and all this no package manager creation and all this kind of crap just goes away. And it's so easy. So you can be a developer if you want. And if you want to do all that stuff, go ahead. But you don't have to. <laughs> you can build this stuff without doing that. OK, so that's what we're trying to say there. Go ahead. You can insert it in like it's a div and put one of these little things in, in your React code. Great. OK, a little chart or something like that. I don't know. We're probably never going to compete with um, D3 or something. But if you want to custom make charts, hey, this will this will certainly be great. Uh, or visualizations. Uh, that's great. Visualizations are here. So remember, these are the things that Zim is good at. These guys right here, one of those things is data visualization. It's really, you know, cool. So um, we, we can do this kind of stuff. Here is physics. So look at that. Isn't that neat? Now, it may be that there's some sort of D3 just lets you plug some numbers in and get this. But if you want to create some things yourself, this isn't all that hard to do either. It's really neat. This brings in integrated physics and all the forces just point towards the middle and then these things bump around together. It's much more fun making this. So anyway, there you go. And if you want that to be little, great. Just put it in a tag uh, and it can be little. But there's, oh, there's working with noise. And so as you can see, this is fun. It's expressive stuff. You're making a spirograph. Remember that? I don't know. Did you ever try spirograph when you were a kid? That kind of thing. There's some custom chart work uh, working on there. Um, an, an example of data. Also, any grids and stuff. Anyway, data visualization can be done in Zim, but it's not the only thing. We're also great for making games, especially 2D games. Um, amusements. Uh, we've got really cool UI UX that traditional HTML doesn't have. Puzzles, like escape puzzles, any holiday card work, or info actives. That's like animated interactive infographics, that kind of stuff. E-learning apps. I think we're going to be the lead, in a sense, in e-learning apps. I'm, I'm kind of hoping so. We've got a whole bunch of people using Zim from around the world that are doing e-learning. And that's great. It's not the only thing we can do. Uh, I'd like the generative art sort of space. I like the game space, the 2D game space. So there's that as well. Interactive logos, perfect. Uh, and interactive logos is an example where you go to a site and there's the interactive logo up top. So you can play around with these a little bit and play even more if you hit the play. And now I can start making shapes like, oh, here's my dragon. I don't know what the dragon would look like. And once you're finished playing, then it just puts it back to the logo. So that's an example of an interactive logo. This was back for the Zim Try site. This is what Zim looked like back in Zim Try. OK, so that is, I guess, a look at the Zim dev site, which is right here. 
And in here, there's the Zim logo, or sort of, uh, this is using the generator in Zim to draw that pattern. We tried to keep it simple. We didn't want to throw off any developers with too much color, uh, too much creativity. <laughs> and so here is our sort of version of a site or a page, a mini page, that will hopefully attract developers, make them feel comfortable, and perhaps try some of this stuff out. That's what we're that's what we're here for. Have a look through this. We're also going to post these uh, cross post these on dev.to. Maybe you read there. This currently is all in medium. By the way, these articles were put in probably in the last couple of months. So in the last couple of months, we made all these articles, and these are huge articles. Um, they're not your normal medium article. They're almost like textbooks. Uh, as a matter of fact, here we are waiting. <laughs> uh, coding creativity on the canvas. And so here is examples. We've got you started off by just typing in some things, new blob.center. So try it out, come on in, don't be afraid, try it out. And then here we are introducing the other 12 guides. And in each one, we have a little short area here. So this is a blurb on Canvas libraries and frameworks, the coding environment. Here's a blurb on display objects and getting things to show up on the canvas. Here's one on components, specifically on components. Uh, here's one for conveniences that talk about the Zim Duo technique, parameters in two ways and chaining. Uh, chaining and dynamic parameters. And here's one on interactivity. What, is, what do we do? Dragging, gesture, transform, tapping, hoving, moving, changing, hit test, conditionals. <gasps> Oh my. <laughs> and then here's one on animation on the canvas. And remember, these are just short little intros to that. And then once you click in, you get yet another guide that is as long as this guide that we're looking at here. That's accessibility on the canvas. Here's various assets on the canvas, and including sprites, styles on the canvas, so how we manage that. Responsive and adaptive design on the canvas. Controls on the canvas, motion controllers, pens, parallax, emitters, sound waves, synths, VR, physics, like how, do, how, do, how does all that stuff go on there? And then basically a conclusion linking through to the learning JavaScript with creative coding, which is way more fun than learning JavaScript with a console or with an HTML uh, form field. It's just way more fun. So, you know, come on in and learn how, how to do JavaScript with creative coding. If you're new, if you think, hey, I want to become a developer, rethink perhaps. Maybe you want to come in and build fun stuff all the time. That's what I would do. So I am Dr. Abstract, and we, <laughs> we look forward to having you. Come on in and join us on Slack as well. Uh, on Slack, you can come in and talk about all this stuff, say hi to us, show, show some examples, ask any questions, and we answer that right away. We would love to see you. And so this is Dr. Abstract saying goodbye, and uh, hopefully that was a good overview of the Zim for developers. Ciao!